Thank you for joining us for this sermon podcast from United Church on the Green, located in New Haven, Connecticut. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are invited and welcome. If you enjoy this podcast and would like to learn more about our open and affirming ministry at United Church on the Green, please visit our website at unitednewhaven.org. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Lisa Kaskowski. I serve as one of the deacons here. The scripture reading today is 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 7. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but do not have love. I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And God's word is still talking because these words are as relevant today as they were when they were written. Names. Names have power. Our ancestors believed that names had so much power that they named God Adonai instead of saying the most sacred name of Yahweh, which means I am who I am aloud. Names tell the world who we believe we are. How many of you have struggled for years simply to claim a name in adulthood that, for yourself, that differed from the name you were told as a child, even when the name you wanted to claim was your given name. I did that. When I was a little girl, my family called me Kathy. And when I grew up, that didn't feel like who I was, and I loved my given name of Catherine. It took me literally decades to convince people that I really was Catherine. Those we honor today have died of a direct result of their gender expression. Some because they chose names for themselves that reflected their sense of identity. They have names that the world may have refused to call them, not because the world found those names sacred, but because the world refused to accept their true selves. We gathered here in this space now give voice to those names because we know that they are who they are now and always. Hear now the names, ages, and places of death of 27 transgendered persons who have been murdered in the United States of America simply because of their gender identity since we last spoke in names aloud at our Transgender Service of Remembrance in November 2017. Stephanie Montez, 47, Corpus Christi, Texas. Candace Towns, 30, Macon, Georgia. Brooklyn Brianna Stevenson, 31, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. <laughs> Brandy Seals, 26, Houston, Texas. Rhiannon Leyendecker, 51, Englewood, Florida. Krista Lee Steele Nudeslane, 42, North Adams, Massachusetts. Vicky Gutierrez, 33, Los Angeles, California. Tonya Harvey, 35, Buffalo, New York. Celine Walker, 36, 
Jacksonville, Florida. Felicia Mitchell, 45, Cleveland, Ohio. Zechariah Fry, 28, Stanley, New Mexico. Amaya Tyre Berryman, 28, East Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Sasha Wall, 29, Chesterfield County, South Carolina. Carla Patricia Flores Taiwan, age 18, Dallas, Texas. Dino Fortson, 36, Atlanta, Georgia. Antasha English, 38, Jacksonville, Florida. Gigi Pierce, 28, Portland, Oregon. Catalina Christina James, 24, Jacksonville, Florida. Diamond Stevens, 39, Meridian, Mississippi. Keisha Wells, 54, Cleveland, Ohio. Sasha Garden, 27, Orlando, Florida. Dejani Stanton, 24, Chicago, Illinois. Montasia Bell, 18, Shreveport, Louisiana. Shante Tucker, 30, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. London Moore, 20 years young, Northport, Florida. Nikki Enriquez, 28, Laredo, Texas. Clara Minaj Carter Frazier, 31, Chicago, Illinois. In addition to those persons murdered in the United States for being transgender, a total of 280 persons have been murdered in these other countries for the same reason. Argentina, Bangladesh, Brazil, Bolivia, Chile. Colombia, Dominican Republic, Ecuador, El Salvador, France. Fiji, Guatemala, Honduras, India, Italy. Mexico, New Zealand, Pakistan, Paraguay, Peru. Philippines, South Africa, Spain, Trinidad and Tobago, Turkey, and the United Kingdom. And let us say together, bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless, bless the Lord, my soul, I'm going to be doing a reading called The Unidentified by Brett Ray. Brett Ray is a trans man and the author of My Name is Brett, Truths from a Trans Christian. He wrote this when a second year Masters of Theological Studies student at Duke Divinity School in Durham, North Carolina. Dear unidentified person, you have a name. You and I both know that. I'm sorry that we have yet to find it. I can't imagine how that breaks your heart. I remember the first day someone in my family called me by mine. It was a year into my transition, and my grandma <coughs> sent me an email addressed to Brett. She said something to this effect. You probably noticed I wrote this to Brett. It's been a hard year getting to this place, but I want you to know that I love you and that I'm with you every step of this journey. Calling you Brett is where I'll start. I hope you had someone like that, someone who was with you every step of the way. I hope you felt that feeling of affirmation, love, and compassion when someone called you by your name. Not the name you were given, but the name you chose. The name that was yours. You have a name. Even though this piece of paper in my hand doesn't have it listed, I'm not sure why it's missing. 
but it's an injustice. It's not fair that such violence was done to you in life, and now in death people are still turning their backs. I am sorry. I'm sorry that we turned away. I am sorry that no one stopped whoever caused you harm. I'm sorry that your life didn't end in the amazing love and affirmation that I feel every time my sweet mom says my name. I'm sorry for whatever ways I was complicit in your pain. From the bottom of my heart, I am so sorry. The least we could do for you is to let you have your name. But we didn't. And I know this won't make up for that, but I want to give you a name now. Because you had the name you chose, but you were also named worthy long before you even knew it to be true, if you ever knew it to be true. You are and will always be worthy. You are worthy of life. You are worthy of our love and the love of our Creator. You are worthy of a safe space to be. You are beautiful and you are worthy. With every breath of my life, I promise you, I will try to carry your name on. I will try to show our trans family and our entire human family that's here and that's yet to come that just like you, they are named worthy. I will try to be a part of the movement that makes the body of Christ a safe space for trans people, rather than a space that is nearly as frightening as an alley at midnight. I will try to stand up to the violence, physical of course, but also the violence of turned backs and awkward stares and not so quiet whispers. I will try to show everyone that you were worthy, and so are they. I will not be perfect. There will be days when I am a part of the violence, and for that, I am sorry. But you have reminded me of what it means to be named worthy. And with that in mind, I will push on, even through those days where I have been a cause of the hurt. I long for the day when everyone named worthy, that is to say, everyone, can join in communion. I long for the day when I can give you a hug, call you by your name, and thank you for living as the person God created you to be. But until then, I will call you worthy. Let us sit for a few moments in silent prayer and think of all those persons who are and will always be worthy. Let us say again together, as is printed in the bulletin, Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. Before I pray, I'd like you please to rise and say with me the affirmation of faith that is printed <coughs> In your boat. I believe it is a matter of faith to stand up for those who cannot stand up for themselves. I believe it is a matter of faith to recognize equally and love all members of God's human family. There are no exceptions to God's love. I believe God's creation is good, beautiful, and sacred. Therefore, to condemn any portion of God's creation is to condemn a portion of God's
God, that this is sin. I believe Jesus Christ came to us to free all people from sin and to make disciples people willing to live Christ's discipline of love and justice for all. I believe the Holy Spirit is that power within us that gives us courage and stamina to face the truth and to live it, even to die for it as Jesus died. I believe in the resurrection, the victory over death, the truth that is life for all in Jesus' name. Glory to God, the one in three, creator, savior, and holy power of love. Amen. Please be seated. Please pray with me. O oh, dear Creator God, the grace and love that you offer us as your children is so pure and so inclusive. When we hurt, we bring our pain and our disappointments to you, anxious to know that you will understand and forgive us for our inadequacies and our shortcomings. Help us to be more like you. Teach us to be more understanding and loving to our siblings who have personal challenges as a result of being. Being lesbian and Jewish and black and queer, Hispanic and Catholic and gay and white and bisexual and male and straight, Asian, female, transgender, differently abled, and the list goes on. All of these things are distractions. They cause us to miss out on the relationships that can bring joy and love that you have promoted and promised. We are already much more alike than we are different. All of us have special needs. All of us, your children, face challenges in our society and in our world. The task we face and trying to understand and accept each other will come through love. Love and only love will give us the desire to fully accept each other. Help us to look beyond the distractions and differences and begin to see the true beauty in humankind. We know that we will be rewarded. Our minds and our consciousness will be elevated and it will be easier for us to love, to share with and understand our siblings, and we will live our lives closer to you. And then we will have evolved. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. 